that's gonna. Are we live? No, not quite. Is your mom's uh, new videos live? No, not yet. Oh, that's what about your dad's? My dad's videos are live. Okay. Well, I'll tell my mom to get on her. At least your dad's are there. Okay. Hey, we're live. Hey. I think. I don't know. We'll have to see what the <coughs> chat says. What the controller? No, no, I didn't. Wait, I'm playing. Well, yeah, we we need to see how bad you are, and then see how good I am. Nate, do you have access to mod to the comments? You're on Clash Royale. I'm playing Clash Royale. I'm trying to like hit up my clan here. Okay. Well, <laughs> the last time a white guy said he was trying to hit up his clan, we had a problem on this channel. So let's just all right move back to the live stream. Okay, okay here we are. I'm right. in the comments section right now. All right. Anybody can tell us how the audio is when we uh, audio's fine. Oh, they said that. Uh, Mason says poggers. Whoa. Poggers with the hard R. I know. That's a strong poggers. I prefer I prefer pagas. That makes sense. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? <clears throat> I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. No, me. not you. Oh, okay. No, uh, Brandon says, what is up? What's up? My dude? Have you seen the Vince McMahon? <sighs> no, I have not. Oh, okay. Never mind. Who's Vince McMahon? Uh, you said it's just friend of my god, Trump? Uh, he is, jeez, he is a, uh, he was like the guy in charge of the WWE for years. No, I, I, I know who he was. Oh, I thought you didn't know who he was. I wanted to make a Trump joke. Wait, are we doing a firefight and not just online? Oh, we'll do online. I was just, I'm not, oh wait, I don't want to play on that map. I'm not good at playing, uh, the actual game, and you're better than me. So I thought that I would play a little bit of Firefight for a few minutes at the beginning here. Okay. And then you could do the actual game. Oh, because I'm better than you. Yeah. Even though I'm probably worse than you. You're not. Okay. I was trying to figure out what... I'll just play a Lost Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, we're just hanging out. We are answering questions if you want. Uh, just talking to you guys. Hopefully it's fun for some people. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, Maestro is asking really important questions here. He says, do you like butter on your toast? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. That's, that's all you it. had to say about who it? Just, yeah. Well, what kind of question is that? Who doesn't? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I prefer putting, like, eggs on my toast and, Fire you know, fight. like, dunking my toast in ketchup and... Ew. I moved this closer to you because Putting, you're... like, you know, C-U-M on my toast, too. I prefer Set that. I prefer Tough putting a lot. lot of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Do you think it's weird when people eat... Um, oh, okay, I have a PETA question for you. Yeah, like, what did you think about when they were like, Oh, humans are the only people who eat the, the stuff from other animals. But like... Okay. Like milk. Carnivores eat stuff from other animals. Well, they only want to eat milk from other animals. Oh, I see. Okay. You know? Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that's bad, evil? No. Humans evil? No, I don't. Like, why? Well, so here, here's my question. If we weren't supposed to eat milk from animals... Somebody change my controls. Why does it exist? Please get in the car. Wait. How are your controls changed? I don't know. Somebody changed the controls on the menu. AKA, I think you. Who would you change? How would I oh, change? Oh, because we're playing as Jill. Oh, Did you we, were to still, her we were still in her account. Well, that's fine. Maybe she'll get an achievement or something. Okay. I'll just play as her, but I'll change her controls. Okay. Options? Is it okay. general settings? Well, why don't you just switch to yours? Because I don't want to have to, because I don't know if like it'll show my email address or something stupid. But are we just going to switch to yours anyways when we go online? No, we can just play as hers. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Like, does it matter? We're only playing for an hour. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's a big deal, right? I don't know if it'll matter. I, I have no idea. Uh, settings. Okay. I got to Q&A stream, but either no one has questions or you don't read Well, okay, so here's a question. Okay. Um, Django Fett 117 No, I did not. Um, is asking, do you plan on playing Tears of the Kingdom? Yeah, but I haven't played through all of Breath of the Wild. Yeah, so I'm glad actually you brought this up because just like two days ago, I actually beat Breath of the Wild for the first time in my life. Uh huh. Um, it's taken me, yes, like six years to get around to playing the game. It was really fun. Like, that was such a fun game, Breath of the Wild was. And it has made me so excited to play Tears of the Kingdom, actually. I don't know if I'm going to play it right away because I think the game, I don't know when it comes out, but I think it comes out in April or something like that. I could uh -huh. be wrong. 
And to be perfectly honest with you, there's so many other games that I'm playing right now and will be playing soon that I just don't know if I'm going to have time to play it immediately, but I am very excited for the game. Like a good example, another game that comes out in April that I'm actually more excited for is uh, the Mega Man Battle Network collection game. You just lost everyone. I know. I know, I just like everyone immediately tuned me oh, out. Fight, but fight. Sorry. But I'm actually so excited for that game because there was so many... Uh, Mega Man Battle Network 2, when I was growing up, was like a really fun game to me. And oh, I'm so excited that's it. finally getting brought up to a new console. I know, me too, after years. I just want yeah. Legends to be brought up. Would you play through the Legends games? I would, yeah. I guess there's three with the spinoff. I would. I would love for that to be brought up. Yeah, I want to so, play Tears of the Kingdom. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'll play it eventually. I'm more excited to go back to old Zelda, though. Yeah. You know, like, because my thing with Tears of the Kingdom is my same complaint with a lot of games now. It doesn't make them Fire bad fight. by any means. But every game is so focused on, like, we have to be huge. We have to take after Degenerate J and be massive. Set, here, be huge. Tough. Yeah. Um, that I don't have time to play all of them, you know? Right. Playing through Scarlet, or... Not a lot of problems, but it's a fun game. And one of my big issues I have with the whole thing is that the game is so big that I feel like it suffers for it. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel that way with, like, Legend of Zelda. I feel like they actually are able to do that and do it well. But even if they are able to do it well, I'm not able to keep up. So I guess, like, my problem with modern gaming in a lot of ways is a lot of games I feel like are just so content-packed that I can't keep up with them. And even if they're well done and content back, like Zelda, I still can't keep up. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, like, Scarlet tried to be content back, and because of that, it's got a lot of problems. So it's like, it, it's like even if you do it right, I have a hard time with how much I want playing it at launch. Right. And then I'm annoyed because it was like Pokemon. It's like, oh, you didn't play at launch? You can't ever get this special Pokemon again because you have a job. Right. It's like, why? Like, why are we rewarding the jobless? It well, sounds mean. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like, you get what? You get an unemployment benefit for playing Pokemon if you're, like, <laughs> either a high schooler who's on summer vacation or you work part time only. Well, I think, the, I think the thing with these games, though, is that I think they actually expect people to only have one console. And I'm being serious about that, because I think it's like, you know, for all the people that only play the Switch, yeah, they probably have a lot of time to play Tears of the Kingdom immediately when it comes out, right? Maybe, but there's also but, a lot of them who only play the Switch who also work a 50-hour work week, yeah, that's and true. they're not going to get but, to that immediately. But when they come home that night, and you think they can just turn on Tears of the Kingdom? They probably can. Yeah. But my thing is, I also have the Xbox, and I have a PlayStation 5, I have a... 360, PS3, you know, I'm playing games on all of these consoles that we use. It's kind of like, when Tears of the Kingdom releases, yeah, I'll probably buy it right away, but it's kind of like, I'm also in the middle of, like, seven games. That kind of just gets to the point where it's like, I'll play it when I play it, which is probably going to be soon afterwards, but... I just don't know if I can play every single possible thing at work. Yeah, at least with Zelda, they don't punish you, though, like Pokemon. No, yeah, and that's the thing. So you feel like you can kind of push it back a little bit. With Pokemon, it's like, hey, you didn't play day one? Wow, you'll you never, You'll never get this special Pikachu. Yeah. You know what's funny, though? You still can. You just have to go online and pay someone $10 to get it. So all, right. it, all it does is enables, like, this weird trading skill. Oh, yeah. you mean that? Like... Game. How much of a low life do you have to be to scalp Pokemon? <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, who is doing this, actually? Uh, too many. <laughs> are there other questions? I don't yeah, know. there are sorry. other questions. I'm sorry. So, anyways, long story short, yes, I'm very excited for Tears of the Kingdom. Also, I, I don't, just don't know if I'm going to play it day one. Also, I don't mean to sound, like, really pathetic here, but I am super broke, so if there's any super chats, Nate will read those as soon as he can. Okay, I will. Uh, they're going to go uh, right back into advertising videos. Magical Jill, actually. Oh, great is saying, Nate, what is your favorite thing about Halo? So this is a me-specific question. Is that why you answered it? Uh, Not yeah. Any loyal subscribers? Exactly. Great. Because it's a me-specific question. What is my favorite thing about Halo? Uh, you know, my favorite thing about Halo is my sound kind of vanilla, but it's actually Master Chief. 
I love Master Chief. And like the story is the story of Halo is great. Like I, I love it. I'm not missing that. I love the gameplay of it. I love the multiplayer, but to me that just all culminates in the character of Master Chief. Like I just think he's awesome. Yeah. And I think if the main character of Halo was someone like really just boring and lame, to me Halo would not be like, the gameplay would still be fun, but I'd be, for the story specifically, I'd be kind of like, what's the difference between this and some other shooter game that's in space? Double kill. No. You know, but, hey, but uh, Master Chief himself actually is the difference between Halo. Right. So, uh, let's see, other questions. Well, can I say something? My favorite thing is oh, about Oh, sure, yeah. My favorite thing is that it finally lets me play as a self-answer, a mentally unstable man who <laughs> is a shooter, who has a hot woman constantly talking to him in his brain that he wants to smash but can't get close to right. because she's not real. It's basically just a biography of my life. So anyway, yeah, kind of like you and Eagle. Is. Yeah, can you move on to the next uh, question? The next question. Try. The Dark Nightmare spelled with a three. Hey, buddy boy. What are your earliest memories of gaming? Playing Spy Hunter 2 with my dad. That's a good memory. Yeah, we used to uh, we used to fight each other. Except if I went too hard on him, he wouldn't play with me anymore for a while because he was a really bad loser. So I had to like, pretend I wasn't as good as I was. That, that also sounds very relevant. Tell me. Because you're like, too good at everything. Because I'm way too good at everything. Yeah, that's the problem. Also playing Star Wars Starfighter, my first video game that I bought. Um, well, no, so it's the second video game. I, I thought your first one was Gran Turismo. Uh, yeah, so okay. I bought them at the same time. Oh, okay. I got okay. Gran Turismo 3. Actually, my dad bought them for me. And um, then also Star, uh, Star Wars Starfighter. Was, uh, Incoming! That was so cool. What? No. Okay. Whoa, what is going on here? I'm trying to turn it down. And do you want me to play instead of like running into a cliff? Yeah, well, Jill told me to turn it down. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, you could play now. But I was just no, wondering. Nobody you... in the chat told me to turn it down, so. I mean, a couple people in the chat said it sounded good. What, Jill? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, Nate doesn't read the chat. I am. I'm like way scrolled up. I'm like going through questions here. What were we talking about? Uh, earliest memories in games. Oh, yeah. You're talking I, about you play, like, Gunsmoke to death when you were a kid. I was such a whiny baby that when my dad didn't buy me, um, Star Wars Starfighter, because I was, like, six or five or something, I cried when we left Walmart. Makes sense. And my dad was like, God damn it. And he, like, went back in and bought it and came back out, and he's like, will you be quiet now? <laughs> that was, like, one of my earliest memories of, like, You gaming. sound like kind of a spoiled brat. Uh, I was. Okay. As a, as a young child, I was. As a youngin'. Yeah. Which is, I think, one reason my sisters didn't like me very much. Probably. But, I think anyway. my earliest memory of gaming was... Uh, well, no one asked you. Can you move on to the next question? Okay. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, a super chat! Wait, I want to know what your... Wait, 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 we'll read that, but I want to know what your what your earliest memory of gaming was and why it was with me. Okay, uh, my earliest memory of gaming was... Wait, wait, was I, hear it, I hear it, I hear it. Oh, I'm Nate! My earliest memory of gaming was when I had no friends at all, and Jay used to invite me over to his house and we would play Arkham <laughs> together. Boy, if it weren't for Jay, honestly, I probably would have self-terminated. <laughs> oh, jeez. Anyway, everyone give him super chats. He's the reason I'm alive. Bye. How did you know my earliest memory in gaming there? <laughs> I just, I knew what it was, dude. <laughs> like, wow. I just knew what it was. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, let's see. Earliest memory in game was actually going to Toys R Us. I don't know if, well, actually. They know what Toys R Us is. Toys R Us is. Well, my question was going to be, I don't know if that was outside Minnesota. Was that a, was that a yes. Minnesota thing? No, or was it that still a... exists in Canada. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, going to Toys R Us when I was a kid, and my parents buying a Nintendo 64, and they bought a Super Mario 64. Well, wow, you sound like a little bit like you were spoiled when you were a I kid. I was, yeah. A lot of kids are on food stamps. So... I know. And so me and my brother went home, and we played Super Mario 64, and I still remember the music and jumping, the excitement we had of jumping into the paintings for the first time. Uh-huh. 
It sounds lame, but when we were a kid, that was, like, incredible. It doesn't sound lame And to also, me. I'm going to be honest, it's not lame to me because I still jump into the paintings now, and I'm like, ah, oh, this is good. That makes sense. So, anyways, okay, next question. My first jumping into paintings experience <laughs> was with Blue's Clues, actually. Oh, I thought you were going to say when you were protesting by... Uh, climate change by dumping paint on paintings. Yeah, yeah. What I did was I attacked the Mona Lisa. <laughs> Got it. So that cool. no one can have nice things. <laughs> hey, I want to change the world now. I'm gonna attack Mona Lisa. I'm not sure. Are people actually that mentally deficient? No. Yes. Or, yes. Or yes, is it like are. a well? No. no. Or is it like what Alex Jones used to call a false flag attack? Why would you do Alex Jones? <laughs> no, like where you'd have where you'd have someone like pretend to be an activist. You know what I mean? Like yeah. how, like his thing was always like they're pretending to be a Republican or whatever. I right. <laughs> I'm not like really well versed on politics. I was just using an example because I think he's funny. Right, because you like Alex Jones and you're a racist. No, I really like when I turn on TikTok and and it'll be like, let's assault possums like, <laughs> randomly, like a clip from his show out of context. <laughs> let's put earthworms in our rear ends. <laughs> and I'm just sitting here like top five Alex Jones moments. What, Joe? I was getting to that Jill next. Okay, uh, Nate, since Jill wants to be involved here and run this as third okay. wave feminism, can you tell me what the... Okay, uh, we have a super chat from Mark... What's uh, his last name? Uh, Kujoski? I might have mispronounced that, I'm sorry, Mark. Wow. Um, but he says, this is my first super chat and I'm glad to donate to you guys. Hey, thanks, Mark, we appreciate you very much. My wait, question... wait, wait, wait. Oh. oh, hi, Mark. What is that from? <laughs> the room? I've never seen the room. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. He says, my question is, what is your most valuable Funko Pop? Mine is Anakin Skywalker from Episode 2. Oh, I think, that's I think actually we, awesome. That's awesome. I think we both have the same most valuable Funko. Yeah. Um, Donald J. Trump. No, wait, I'm just kidding. It's uh, <laughs> Captain Rex. Yeah. Yeah, is yours also yeah, Captain Yeah, that is Rex? also Captain Rex, yeah. Um, my second is, uh, I don't know why they translated it to this. She should be called Wicked Lady, because that oh, was her no. name in Japan. Yeah. But the evil version of Chibiusa from Sailor Moon, which is for some reason translated to Black Lady. Oh, no. <laughs> which I still don't understand why they translated it that way. I mean, like, you're Funko, you should know better. But, right. But that's what it was, so that's my probably second most valuable. Well, my second is Cad Bane. Which one? Was that the one I found for you? Um, yeah. Remember I found you a Cad Bane? Yeah. Anyway, everything in life comes back to me. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, he's my second most valuable I have. Like, valuable to you it, or monetarily? Uh, monetarily. What's he worth? $150. See, I keep thinking about selling my Captain Rex just because I don't have very much money. And I know it's, like, really cool, but it's, like... It sits on a shelf. It does. Like, I love it, but it sits on a shelf. It does. Did you know that if you die in this... I'm not trying to bullshit this, I'm pretty sure it's true... The flood can possess your dead body, and you can end up fighting yourself. I did know that, yeah. Okay, well, this uh, guy we have a, another super chat, by the way. A drive by. I gotta get to before Jill's like, "Hey, wait a minute!" Wait uh, a the nightmare. You did the a dark super, nightmare? Yeah, the dark nightmare has done us another super chat, or not another. He's done a super chat. Okay, we have like the and worst he said, ever "Okay, sorry." He said, this is for the, quote, keep Nate from self-terminating font. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Just like true single mothers, that's not going towards my kid. That is going towards something I want. But I'll tell the court it went towards my kid. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks. Well, thank you for donating to that fund. I do want to keep myself from self-terminating. We appreciate it, but if we can't earn at least a hundred dollars <laughs> by the end of the of the live stream, Nate might. No, I might. Kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, we have a question here from uh, Broly Banderas. Hey, Broly. He says, "Favorite Arkham boss fight? Electrocutioner." <laughs> <laughs> How about you? <laughs> That is a good one. I don't know how I can top that. Um, no, actually, do you want to know what my actual one is after thinking about it for a while? I think mine is actually... Uh, yes, I do. But I think mine is Mr. Freeze from Arkham City. That's a great one. That's a great one. Oh, no, my favorite My oh, favorite geez. is Killer Croc from Arkham Asylum. Killer Croc? I love the Killer Croc boss fight from Arkham Asylum. I love that fight. Um, That's one of the most iconic gaming memories in my life is that boss fight. The boss fight was great. I think mine... So, have you played Origins in a while? I haven't played that in probably like seven years. There's a few great ones in Origins. One of them is Bane. 
Uh, Bane, I vaguely remember that, yes. Bane has a great boss fight. And then also another one is actually um, Deadshot. Deadshot in that game, now, when T and I played it, we were just whining about it constantly because we got really upset. But the Deadshot fight is super fun. Uh, it's basically like you are... It, it's kind of like the Mr. Freeze fight, actually. Yeah. You basically have to take like go around and take all these guys out and then damage Deadshot. It's like a combination of the Mr. Freeze fight and the uh, Two-Face fight as Catwoman from post-Arkham City, like the post-game. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really good. I really like the boss fights in that game. Yeah, the Deadshot one was great from that. I do remember that fight. Also, if anyone wants to, you know, like, is the game too quiet now? I mean, I know most people don't care about the game. It's just here to, like, um. be here, but... You can let us know if it's now too quiet, because Jill forced me to turn it down, so I don't know. Mm, I haven't seen any comments about that. Sorry it was loud. Um, that was Jill's see. fault. I refuse to accept responsibility for my it's actions. It's always Jill's fault. So, okay, wait, wait, wait I did have another question. Have you ever right? seen a cover or a flood with a gravity hammer? No, I haven't, actually. <laughs> I did see another question here, and I lost it, so now I'm trying to find it again. Okay. Um, well, so I apologize about that. So, okay. well, let's see. Uh, well, if there's anything else interesting in the chat, you can always mention it, am too. Am I, like, stupid? Is that a question? Yeah, it was. One of these guys has a rocket launcher. Well, bef while I'm finding this, we have a question from Adshade Adam. What do you think of the Halo TV show? Terrible. Absolutely horrendous. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it at all. Okay, it's one well. of the worst <laughs> adaptations of a story ever. Okay. And you know what sucks? It has good, like, um, combat in it. Like, it, it could have been amazing. Yeah. And then, like, uh, and then, lo and behold, what happens? Well, we get an interview where basically they say, like, yeah, we just wanted to be inspired by the game. We didn't really want to follow it at all. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, gee, I wonder why your story fell apart completely. And they, like, take so many random oh, twists geez. and turns. You know, Whoa. I'm not the biggest Last of Us fan, but it's the opposite of The Last of Us, where Last of Us is, like, really loyal to its source material. Yeah. And great. Good on you. Thanks. Because that's what made your story good. Um, but then the the Halo TV show is the opposite. It's like, well, I don't know. Halo looks cool. Let's make it look like that. We'll use the same names. Right. It's like, well, looking cool is not what Halo was. Well, it is, but it's not. That's not like the core, not the core of, of thing Halo. of the game. Yeah, I don't know. It's, like, really silly to me. Okay, Chance Jones is asking me, says, Nate, what is your favorite game of all time? Oh, no. My favorite game of all time is Assassin's Creed Origins. I know people just logged off the chat because they hate RPG everything. I think, actually, a lot um, of people like Origins. I loved Origins. You know, I think this is... Well, I was going to say this is the best RPG game, but obviously. Uh, this is this is my favorite Assassin's Creed game because, first of all, it, it combines a lot of good Assassin's Creed elements, like the original elements, with modern stuff. But I thought it really... I thought it really added to the franchise because I remember after Unity and then Syndicate, which I like Syndicate, but a lot of people I, I realized did not play it because of the Unity de debacle. I remember Ubisoft announced, yeah, we're going to take a one-year break from Assassin's Creed uh, so we can really, you know, expand the franchise or whatever. And I was like, great, cool. And then Origins came out, and to me it was like, okay, this is everything I've ever wanted in an Assassin's Creed game. You know, my whole life I've always loved... I've always loved uh, ancient history, and to me, Assassin's Creed Origins is that. You know, it... it gives me a chance to go back into one of my favorite time periods in all of history, which is ancient Rome, and, on oh, sorry, not ancient Rome, ancient Egypt, but it's dealing with the ancient Romans, too, in the game, so you kind of get, like, the cool combination of both of those worlds in an Assassin's Creed game, and I just thought it was so amazing, I get to, like, explore pyramids and, and everything like that, and the story was great, Bayek was great, his story was awesome, I loved how it introduced... The uh, Hidden Ones, which obviously go on to be the Assassins. Um, yeah, I don't know. Everything about that game was great. Good. Yeah. I mean, it was your question. I just wasn't interrupting you for once. What's your favorite game of all time? Is it... Uh, I think I know what it is, but... Probably Fallout New Vegas. But yeah. I've talked about it a lot, so I'm sure they know. Yeah. I think it has, like, the best written dialogue out of any game I've ever played. Um, 
I think the world's amazing. I also think it's like a really good, what would you say, like a canvas for modding and other stuff. Like, it's just such a perfect world, like, that it's great the way it is, but it's very easy for players to come in and improve. And, you know, I, I just think it's really, really well done. It's one of the best RPGs, I think, of all time. Yeah. Um, in terms of video game RPGs, so. Yeah, it was fantastic. That's probably my favorite game. But, you know, it also is, like, it's very... my. I don't have, like, a list like you, really, that, like, works. Like, I have a list that I've shared on the Let's Play channel before, which, if you guys haven't checked this out, I do want to say, Jill started her own channel, Magical Jill. That's, um, in the... It should be in the description, but you can also just search Magical Jill in a new tab. Um, we're going to be making Pokemon videos over there, actually. So that's going to be kind of the home of our Pokemon content. And then also Jill reviews toys and dolls there as well. And we also talk about some superhero content, more like anime. So like I know we talk about um, Sailor Moon, which I love. And we are going to be getting into other stuff too. Like I know Jill wants to watch My Hero Academia. And I'm sure that's where we'll talk about that. So any kind of anime stuff, um, you know, like Pokemon um, and all kinds of other stuff if you're interested in please check it out and subscribe to that channel because we're trying to get Jill to a thousand subscribers. Um, I don't know if it's possible, but we're trying to get her there in the next three months. Yeah. Because she needs to get 4,000 hours of watch time and um, also a thousand subscribers to get monetized. And Jill and I have had like a lot of monetary and time problems in the last year um, where we're working probably a lot more than we should be to try and make up for it. So if we can kind of get that channel off the ground at some point here... It would really help us out. But we're also playing games on Degenerate Plays, so that's there too. <laughs> right. Um, I just read a comment, I was laughing. Oh. Was it Comments a from comment? Amazon Mason. Is Jill really magical, or is it just the government trying to mess with us again? <laughs> uh, well, Alex will make a, uh, like Alex Jones will make a thing about it. That is so, true. I'm sure. Well, I've seen, I so Big Boy M9 says his favorite is Rogue. That is interesting, actually. I've never heard anyone say their favorite... AC game was Rogue. I could definitely see it. It's a good it. game. It's I, a really good game. I could definitely see it. And you know why I could see it? Because it takes four. And yeah, it doesn't have like the same pirate vibes, but it like perfects a lot of things from four. It's, yeah. It's kind of a soft sequel to AC4. It kind of is, yeah. Where you have like almost more the tone of AC3, but the ship mechanics of AC4 mm -hmm. and the roaming of AC4. Can't you also kind of roam around islands again in Rogue? I think, uh, to some extent. I don't remember to what extent. I don't think so. You can't? Well, the game takes place in... Oh, yeah, you can a little bit, yeah. I, I thought it was so. kind of a mixture between 3 and 4. It kind of freedom. is, yeah. yeah. But I, I could definitely see that being someone's, especially because it's like a slow descent um, uh, of, you know, Shay. Yeah. And I do like how it kind of shows that the assassins aren't always right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, was, like, yeah. the assassins were definitely in the wrong. They led to a lot of death there. Yeah, well, and... My favorite thing about Rogue, which I know you haven't played the whole game, so I'm trying not to spoil it here, it is the very ending of Rogue. Oh, how it ties into Unity? Is that what you're talking about? I do know uh, how it ties into Unity. How does it tie into Unity? With, oh, I don't, am I spoiling the game for people? I don't know. That Shay is involved in the events of Arno. Right. Oh, okay, so you already... Okay, I was waiting for us to get to that game so you'd see that, but I guess you already know. Yeah, I already know. I, I'm trying not okay. to just go too far here, because I don't know if Jill knows too much about it, okay. but those two games cross over. Yeah, I, I thought that was so incredible when I got to it, and I was like, whoa, wait a minute! <laughs> it is really cool. I never knew that these guys show up if you last long enough, you see them. Oh, huh, I didn't know uh, that. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Let's see, oh, we have a super chat here. Yeah, from, from a Super Chad. From a Super Chad, from Edwin Francisco. Hey, thank you very much, Edwin. Who is the video game protagonist you hate the most? Abby from The Last of Us 2. Whoa, jeez. I can't stand Abby. I cannot stand her. Because, like, everybody's like, well, it makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense, but, like, you don't make me like a character by murdering another character I like. Yeah. That's not how it works for me. And, like, I'm happy for people who love that game. I'm genuinely happy for them. I'm not here to, like, shit all over the game. I'm just telling you, I don't enjoy playing as a character who removes another character from the narrative that I really like. That's right. just not for me. Like, in terms of having, like, a ton of sympathy and really loving playing as them. It would be like if in Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Three or whatever, <clears throat> you open the game as, like, some random dude who, like 
oh, well, Cloud killed this Shinra soldier who was my dad in the first game, and then that dude, like, just shoots Cloud in the head and you play as him the rest of the game. <laughs> right. It's like, like I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to have fun with that, probably, because I really like Cloud. Right. And you can say, like, well, you're being closed-minded. Yeah, maybe, because, like, one of the reasons I loved the first game is I loved those two characters, and I think that Naughty Dog does such a good job of writing character relationships that once you strip away those relationships and leave a character mostly on their own, it doesn't make their game bad, but it's not as appealing to me. You know, like, I wouldn't enjoy Jack and Daxter quite as much if it wasn't Jack and Daxter. That's why I think the game Daxter, other than just some gameplay stuff, isn't really as enjoyable to me, because you don't have that friendship dynamic of the two of them together. You know, Ratchet and Clank, but all of a sudden Clank is gone. Clank is dead! Right. Now you're just Ratchet. It's like, I'm not saying it'd be a bad game. But, like, I love that character relationship so much. I know it's not the same studio. I'm just making up the point. Uh, that if you were to remove that relationship, all of a sudden, it's very frustrating to me, and it makes me have a hard time get behind that protagonist. You know? Yeah. That would make sense. Do you have a least favorite video game protagonist? Least favorite video game protagonist. See, I've been trying to think about this, and I don't really know if I have one. Really? I mean, there there are characters I dislike. Mm Hmm. Like, uh, from Uncharted, I've never, ever liked Chloe. From the really? first time I, I like ever, I, I know you like Chloe. I hated her, though. See, I hate Elena. I think See, El- and I was fine with Elena. <laughs> I don't like Elena because I feel like she forces Nathan Drake to change who he is in order to be with her. Yeah. And I don't like people like that. That makes sense. But that's just me, you know? I mean, obviously. And I just thought, I thought Chloe was just annoying. Right, fair enough. In 2, she was, like, totally untrustworthy. That's true. That's 100% true. She was. And, uh, yeah, do, I don't So know. do you find Catwoman annoying, then? No. But it's the same thing, isn't it? But Catwoman, I'm going... I'm not going into the Arkham game expecting Catwoman to be, like, some hero, though. Like, right. I know I know what she is. Whereas I feel like with Uncharted 2... You were expecting... I was friend. expecting Chloe to be, like, some hero. When mm-hmm. it's like, well, no, she's not. She's just bad. Like why? Like and I and I got the impression of like, right? I don't know. Do you wanna? Do you wanna do some? Sure. Uh, Malcolm X says, "What's your ranking of these Spider-Man films?" <laughs> uh, Miles Morales first. Uh, films. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, oh wait, we don't want to do eight v eight. We want to do four v four, right? Uh, Probably. yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I, that's what I'm saying. It's Malcolm X we're talking to. <laughs> right. So I'm saying the one with Miles first, of course. Uh, what is it? Into the Spider-Verse. No, um, my favorite is probably... Nate's favorite is No Way Home, for sure. Do you want to check the chat? Yeah. Yeah, my favorite's No Way Home. I'd say, for me, probably it goes No Way Home, and then Spider... Then The Amazing Spider-Man... And then Spider-Man 2, and then Homecoming, Team Slayer. <sighs> Amazing, no, Homecoming, Spider-Man 1, mm-hmm. Far From Home, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and then my least favorite, oh jeez, okay, wait, 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 I need, I need That's to... your guy, that's your guy, that's your friend. I am an idiot. I, like, wasn't paying attention. Oh. I was not paying attention. <laughs> oh my. And then, what did I leave out? Spider-Man 3. Do you need me to play? No, I'm good. I just, I was not paying attention. Okay, so my favorites in in order, please don't shoot our guy. My favorites in order would probably be No Way Home, actually. Yeah. Spider-Man 2, did you say that one? Yeah. That's that my was your second one? third favorite. I thought you said Spider-Man 3 was your third favorite. No, Spider-Man 3 is my least favorite. Wait, I really? like I like Spider Man three. It's just my probably my least favorite of all the Spider Man movies. Uh, I like it. It's a good movie. <clears throat> so, No Way Home is probably my favorite, but I understand it's my favorite because of a nostalgia trip. Yeah, I'm not Nate. You just murdered two of our guys. Well, I threw a grenade and someone jumped in front of me, and the grenade bounced off of him backwards. This is really bad. It's fine. That guy just jumped in front of me. That was his fault. It's fine. It's fine. That was his fault. That was not my fault. I know. I know. No way home um, is is like a nostalgia thing, but I also do think that Willem Dafoe did it just a masterclass performance in that movie. Yeah. Um, so like that's another reason I really love it. As Green Goblin. I thought he did, if not as good as his original performance, better. Right. 
Um, but I also love like the friendship between the Spider-Man and all that stuff. Now, my second favorite is Spider-Man 2, and that is the one I think is the best written film. If No Way Home didn't exist, and I wasn't like very clearly like oh, affected geez. by nostalgia, which I am, and I understand that, no, Spider-Man 2 is the film I think is, like, if we're just looking at the script and trying to be as objective as we can, even though that's really hard to do, I think it has the most solid written script, um, the best, like, story, but it's still not my favorite. It's my second favorite. I think Spider-Man 2 is probably one of the best written superhero movies. Yeah, I think so, too. So, I, I also think Unbreakable is another one. Yeah, that's a good movie. It does not get any, like, much credit at all, but I do think it's up there as one of the better written superhero movies and probably probably one of the best written superhero origin stories yeah um, on film but yeah no I don't know so that's uh, but I wanted to read a couple things here too um uh, I just saw some purple Gengar said hey man hope you and your wife are happy and healthy man he didn't say it about you so he hopes you're unhealthy Nate I'm very unhealthy I've been trying to spread kindness and positivity lately I'm struggling right now but it doesn't mean I can't brighten other people's day I think that's a good way first up oh jeez at... they all spawned in right there Nate didn't care that you're struggling okay sorry I think that's a good way to look at life honestly um that what is it uh Robin Williams said it was like a lot of times people who are sad try their best to make other people laugh and smile so that they don't have to feel the same way. Yeah. You know, I think that, like, not saying, like, deflect from all your problems and never feel, but, like, I think it's good to try and um, bring other people up the best you can because I've found, personally, that helps bring me up anyway. Right. You know, from even, even like, just a self-serving perspective of, like, helping people, I find makes it feel like I actually contributed to something and did something. Uh, but whatever's going on in your life, I genuinely hope it gets better. Because I... I ran out of ammo. I'm not sure what it is, but I get it. It just sucks. Um, <clears throat> so somebody said... Uh, DC Temple said, A hot take, Bane is the best Batman villain and the best villain ever made. Wow. Whoa. Bane is, the tru villain. is truly Batman's arch nemesis. He always needed from all the way from the 40s. I mean, I think Bane's great. I mean, here's the thing. I, I, I think Bane is great. I, I will fully agree on that. But I don't think he's Batman's true nemesis. I think he is one of the best Batman villains. I think he is. But, like, Batman and Joker is just, like, the greatest superhero and villain combo ever. I do agree, although it's getting overdone. It is It is very overdone. Like, I think they need to settle down a little bit on Batman and Joker, which is why I'm glad the Batman did not focus on Joker. Yes. Although, I like the idea of Joker kind of being a Silence of the Lambs in the background guy for a few movies. Yeah, me too. Um, that's why I'm a little bummed that that very... I don't know if it's Cohen or Keegan or whatever. Very McCockner. People get mad at me about that. Um, that scene, I think, was really good. I'm a little disappointed it didn't end up in the movie in some fashion. Yeah. Uh, I made a whole video on, on that vi uh, with Rejected Media, if you haven't seen it, but... I think that that scene was great, and it really bummed me out that we didn't get to see more of it, mm -hmm. you know? So, it's like, I am i guess I'm a little bit of a hypocrite. I think Joker's overdone, but I also want to see Joker. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Right. Well, I guess I'd, I'd want to see Joker in the Batman eventually. Yeah. But I am totally fine with taking a break from him. Like, I was perfectly fine seeing the Riddler. I'm fine in the Batman, too, if maybe the, the villain's someone else, like Mr. Freeze or, you know, whoever. And then maybe bringing in Joker for the next one. For the third one, I guess it would be. Because it's like, you know, I love Joker, but I'm also fine with a break. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the thing. Like, I'm fine with a break. I think that... I think, unfortunately, though, like, the Dark Knight did just as much good... The Dark Knight trilogy of, like, you know, Nolan's work did just as much good as it did in, in a few ways bad for yeah. Batman. Because everybody thinks every Joker has to be Ledger. Right. And everybody thinks that Bane is just this, like, guy who wants to punish Gotham or whatever, when that's usually not who he is. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think, like, because... Because, like, the, those are a mainstream adaptation, a lot of people got into Batman through the Dark Knight movies, and now they expect things to be the Dark Knight movies. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of people have a misunderstanding of, like... Well, not every Joker is going to be Ledger. Not every Bane is going to be the Tom Hardy Bane or whatever. That's just not how it works. Well, and yeah, and I remember when uh, Suicide Squad, the original one, which is not a great movie at all, and the Joker in that was not good at all. Mm -hmm. But I remember when that movie came out, I thought it, it still was unfair for Jared Leto 
which maybe had to do with some of his writing a little bit too, but I thought it was unfair for Jared Leto that everyone just compared him to uh, the Heath Ledger's Joker. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, well, this isn't Heath Ledger, and the writing kind of made him so he, like, kind of was starting to go that way, but he was different. Oh, you're talking about, like, what's the Snyder cut at the yeah. end? Yeah, also I went 18 and 9, good so job. that's pretty good. Hey, good job. Yeah, and it's like, you know, and, and I feel like the writing kind of made him that way a little bit. Uh, everyone just got mad at him because it wasn't Heath Ledger's Joker, and to me it was kind of like, you know, this isn't really a great Joker, but that's still an unfair comparison. Mm -hmm. Like, Heath Ledger's Joker is just Heath Ledger's Joker. Right, just like he's not Jack Nicholson. Yeah. There's some elements that are similar. Right. They're not the same one, though, yeah. Like, I feel like we should criticize, we should criticize Jared Leto's Joker for what it was. Because I think there is some valid criticisms there. There's a lot. But I, I don't think it's very fair for him to just be compared to Heath Ledger all the time. Well, what was same weird, with same with everyone else too. What was weird to me was, do you want to like leave this playlist? By the way, I, I don't mean to be a quitter, but so you just don't only play Halo One. Uh, let's play one more Halo One because I like Halo One. Okay, I just didn't know if you didn't oh, want to play geez, Halo. Jeez, I got annihilated. There. You're like all of a sudden I hate Halo. Oh one. man, let's quit now. <laughs> um, jeez. Well, my other fear is that we're gonna quit and they're gonna be like, well, you can't play anymore. Yeah, that's true. That's fair. Um. I don't have any grenades. You want to no. start out with grenades on this? Yeah, I'd catch a grenade for you, though. Thank you. Uh, but I was going to say that with um, all of this, you know, obviously it's, like, opinion-based, too. Like, who's your favorite Joker? Like, and that kind of thing with live action, just like Batman. But I really liked the Nicholson Joker, you know, a lot. Mm -hmm. And honestly, to me, he was just as good as Heath. I don't, I don't know if I'd say he was better. Yeah. But I thought he did as good of a job. Like, I just thought he was great, and he was a different type of Joker. And then I really loved Arthur Fleck, like the uh, Joaquin, the Joaquin Phoenix. Phoenix one. He was probably my favorite Joker. Even though he's not at all a comic book Joker. No. Not at all. But I'm fine with that. I didn't expect him to be, and he's not, and I, I like what he is. And my thing with Jared Leto is, like, all of the allegations aside, because there's a lot of weird stuff around the guy yeah. in terms of, like... I don't really know enough about the situation, but, like, people say he was, like, DMing minors and all this stuff. Well, he's just method acting. Well, and he, like, borderline has, like, a, a, a really weird following in terms of... I, not like his fans are all weird, but there's a lot of people who are weird. Who, yeah. like, go meet with him in the desert type stuff for festivals. And, and just, like, I don't know. But, like, rock stars have been doing that kind of crap for ages. and Right. You know... So I don't know. I, I think that with his part, though, I think it was horrible in the original Suicide Squad. Yeah, it was and then, garbage. And then I thought that in... But David Ayer says it wasn't supposed to be. You know, David Ayer says that WB interfered, like, an insane amount with that movie and Shh. ruined that movie. Yeah. And that that wasn't at all what he wanted to release and that that wasn't what it was supposed to be. So it's just... It's just too it's bad. unfortunate. Because if that's true, like, David Ayer gets so much crap on social media, and it's like, bro didn't even write this movie, like, or didn't even make this movie the way that it came out, if that's true. He made it a different way, and they and they butchered it for him. Right. And then if, if, the way Ayer wrote the original Joker was more in line with that Joker at the end of the Snyder Cut, that's night and day. Yeah. At the end of the Snyder Cut, I thought he was actually menacing. Like, his laugh was a little cringe, and his, like, reach-around line was stupid. Do you remember? He's like, who's going to give you the reach around? Oh, yeah. That okay. line, like, pulled me out of the scene because I was like, okay, like, this is just trying to be edgy. Right. But um, otherwise, like, I really like that performance. Yeah. Um, Patty Ice left a super chat, which I really appreciate. Thank you very much. And Thank said, you, Patty. I'm done trying to convince you. You want forgiveness? Get religion. <laughs> Didn't say that part, but I added that part. That's like a top five superhero line ever. Aw, look at little Goblin Jr gonna cry. Would you have liked it if Tobey Maguire said that in uh, No Way Home? Would you have liked it if um, James Franco was in No Way Home yes. and he was teleported there but he had his pants down. Yes, in the yes, scene yes, he, yes, so yes. So he, he's teleported in, but his pants are down, and he turns around, you can see his butt. Yes. And he's like, oh, sorry, I was just meeting with my acting students, because, like, Harry Osborne's running an acting school. Right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, let's do it. <laughs> and he's like, well, I guess I gotta help Pete out again. <laughs> And Pete's like, oh, I haven't talked to Harry since he tried to grab MJ when she went to an acting class. <laughs> I like, 
I like how like there wasn't really much denial of those allegations. It was just, yeah, I have a sex addiction. <laughs> I know. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I know that was hilarious. I mean, it's bad. It's not. It's not funny. But, it's but it funny. is funny. It's funny how candid the whole thing was handled. Like normally, there's like at least a no, 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 guys, I'm gay. You know, like a Kevin Spacey thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like a no, no, guys, I didn't do that. Like there's some deflection or some like no, 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 that. Well, didn't you see, happen. it's not that bad. It's like, but with him, he was he was more like yeah, yeah, well, okay, and then like just disappeared. It was such a bizarre situation, and now he's just gone. I know. <laughs> and you know what's stupid to me? Nobody mentions how Seth Rogen, like, stood by him that whole time. Yeah. And, like, let's be honest, in my opinion, very clearly had to me. know at least a little bit. And then as soon as it started tarnishing his opinion, he, like, ditched him. Yeah. And now everybody's like, oh, man, I'm so excited for the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I'm like, yeah, but he's producing it. And, like, he's the most performative guy ever, I think. With, right. like morality stuff mm -hmm. like he's on twitter all the time talking about like morality and he's always like there was some youtuber that i don't follow but i watched this story about it where it was like he uh this youtuber i think his name was count dankula i think it was that guy who did the 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 j joke i know some people thought it was really offensive where he like taught his girlfriend's dog to do like the arm oh wave that guy two. yeah well, that guy is also a comedian. Okay. And um, my understanding is that he told a joke about being Jewish. And that Seth Rogen literally DM'd him on Twitter talking to him about how you can't make that joke. I am Jewish. And it's like, bro, you should have more important stuff going on. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you're like an A-list actor. You were in like Pineapple Express and the interview and all this crap. And you're supposed to be like producing TMNT, which I'm supposed to trust you with. And you're preoccupied with DMing people on Twitter about their jokes. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. And you were, like, hanging out with a guy who, like, didn't deny anything going on. And then you ditched him as soon as, like, people started coming after you about it. Right. But the moment they came after you, you ditched him. But before that, you were, like, BFF still. You know what I'm saying? Isn't Seth Rogen in something coming out? Something coming out soon. Uh, probably. Is he in the Mario movie? Yeah, I think he's like Bowser. Okay. No, I, Bowser's Jack Black. I don't know. I just think that he's like really, uh, fake. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's like the nicest guy ever. Maybe he's just gotten a bad rap. I don't know. But to me, that's one of those things where like I saw everybody complaining about the new TMNT movie, which I care about far more than Nate does. He's not really a big TMNT guy. Um. Okay, I think he, I'm way better than, uh, Way better at uh, Halo 1 than I am at Halo 4. This is Halo Reach. Halo Reach, I mean. I'm not good at Halo Oh, a Reach super either. chat. Uh, but anyway, can I just finish what I was saying real quick? Yeah. My my thing, though, is that everybody was talking about, like, well, now April is, like, body positive, and, like, now uh, Splinter is, like, played by Jackie Chan or whatever. I don't remember, okay? Like, I didn't even really care. And everyone's like, oh, this is a huge problem. And then other people are like, no, 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 you're racist. You're bringing that up. You, like, are hateful. And I'm just sitting here like, do none of you realize Seth Rogen is involved in this movie and he's kind of a dick? Like, I... I and, and the last few things he's written... Because he's been involved in some big, like, comedy-type projects over the last five years. Yeah. And even in writing positions in terms of, like, producing and helping write. And the comedy usually comes down to conservatives bad, weed funny, haha. And I'm like, <laughs> even if you believe all of that, whatever, I don't care. But, like, that's not funny, that's not good writing. And he's going to be doing a lot of the, you know, like he's his name is directly tied to this movie in, like, a powerful role. Yeah. I'm more worried about that. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, because you know the whole thing will just be, like, kind of like you said, conservatives, bad, weed, funny. Well, I, I worry that, that, that that kind of stuff will be an element of it, or that it'll be, like, just... Because he thinks he knows everything. Like, at least that's how he comes off to me. And... I don't really like people who think they know everything. Because, like, nobody knows everything. I know everything. And I don't like when they're in positions of power on brands I also like. Cause right. Because I just want people to be humble and do their best by the characters. That's all. It's not hard to ask. I don't know. what What's the super chat? Sorry. Okay, let's see. From Matthew the Hedgehog. Okay, I suck at this. Who would win Arkham Batman or PS4 Spider-Man? Oh, they said Seth Rogen's Donkey Kong. That's what... I was right there. So oh, anyways, so he wasn't Bowser. Okay. Yeah, he's... No, Bowser's Jack Black. Okay. But, yeah, so anyways, who would win Arkham Batman or PS4 Spider-Man? Before I answer that, would you watch an internet video Jack Blacked? 
Uh, I've already seen multiple videos of that. Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm uh, in one of them. Okay. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I, I think Spider-Man would win just because, like, he has access to... Well, wait a minute! But he has access to all the same gadgets, like, in terms of numbered gadgets, as Batman, and he's more agile. But do you say Batman wouldn't lose anything? Uh, well, I don't know. Is Batman, like, taking a year to, like, set a trap for Spider-Man? Apparently. Okay, then Batman wins. Like, <laughs> But are we talking about the two bump into each other on the road and I, have a fight? I mean, that's, cause that, that's the funny thing. Whenever I see, like, Batman versus anyone debates is, you know, it's always like, well, who would win a fight, Batman or, you know, God? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> and it's always Batman just like, or Jesus of Nazareth? Well, is it <laughs> the birthday of Jesus? Well, yeah, or is and it's it like, like post-resurrection You Jesus? know, and like the Batman fanboys always come out in full force because it's like Batman can't lose anything. And then it's like, well, Batman would lose against, you know, uh, Thor, the God of Thunder. And it's like, well, but Batman gets all this prep time to make all these traps. And I'm like, okay, but this isn't the fight. Well, the it, fight is just Batman's walking down the street, Thor's walking down the street, they see each other, they they, they, they get into a brawl. Okay, well, that, you, that's the fight. If you specify that, then then I think Spider-Man wins. But that, yeah, and that that's my thing. Like, that whenever people say, who would win in a fight, my thing is not like, well, this person gets to design all these traps specifically. It's like, that's not the fight. The fight is just who would win in a fight. It's not one side randomly gets time to think about how to beat the other side, then that's not the fight. You know? Like, okay, so that's you not hate it. prep time. Well, you, you I, go into everything, like, immediately without prep time. I'm fine with prep time, but my thing also is, like, if Batman gets all this prep time, why doesn't the other person get all this prep time to develop a trap to beat Batman? Well, what would but they it's do? Like, well, just buy a gun? I don't know. I mean, I don't <laughs> just know. A joke. Like, I don't know. It's like, you know, can't there be anything that beats Batman? Like, I don't uh, know. You would think. You know, but it's like, for some reason, when you get to, like, Batman well, fan Batman boys, does lose in the comics. Right. And it's just like, Batman would win everything! And it's just like, does he? It really depends. Like, I mean, <laughs> one, I really liked in, um, I really liked in Tom King's run uh, on Batman with the button, and Batman is just ambushed by Reverse Flash, and he holds him off, but he gets his ass kicked. Like, he loses. Right. So, like, I, I thought that was a good way to display Batman's intelligence, because it's like, yeah, Batman, he can hold his own. Right. It doesn't mean he'll win every fight. Like he literally, he's he literally even tells um, Reverse Flash that he's just trying to stall him so that Barry can show up, right? Like, the Flash to fight him, and he kind of does. But then, like Barry's a minute late or something like that, and then Batman just gets his ass kicked, even though he does hurt Reverse Flash. One thing I thought was sick in that fight was that he put. Um... <laughs> did you see that? Ch- <laughs> did you see that? Ch- I did. It's yeah. Really funny. <laughs> Um, one thing I thought was really funny in that fight, or really cool, was the way Batman slows down Reverse Flash, dude, Yeah, is he jams a battering into the ground, and then Reverse Flash runs up to, like, punch him, and it goes through his foot. Oh, Because he steps on it. That's awesome. Yeah, so, like, things like that are, like, how Batman is smart, and, like, you know, but acting like he's just Jesus is a little bit much to me. Yeah. That's kind of where I don't like it. Well, yeah, and that's that's what the argument always leads to, is Batman's Jesus. Which is why I'm glad that they didn't do that in The Batman. I mean, like, he didn't win on his own. Right. And, like, he can win on his own, but I don't think it's fair to act like, against all odds, he always will win on his own. That's kind of like... Right. I don't know. Yeah. That, that also defeats the purpose of him being a man. Like, if he's if he's basically God all the time, then how is he, like, the best of us by just being a man who, like, is capable of, like, elevating himself if he's perfect, you know? Yeah. That's not just a man, then. That's, like, a perfect supernatural being. Yeah, then it's like, well, this isn't Batman, then. Then he's just Superman. Right. So, I don't know. I think you have to be careful writing this character. So, uh, Rebellious T says Batman versus the Pope next. <laughs> uh, well, I think the Pope would win because he'd probably put that hat on the ground and Batman that would fall sense. on it. He'd trip over it. <laughs> what do you think about the Pope hat? Uh, the Pope. I mean, you think it's cool? Personally, I mean, I There's I've seen hat. some really hot Rule Thirty Four of just the Pope hat itself. There's a turtle in a Pope hat in Elden Ring. Yeah, there is. Yeah. So is the I mean, thirty four you've seen of him? No, it's it's just the hat, not kind of like the sorting hat in Harry Potter. Oh. It's just the hat. So I love the hat. I've never seen Rule Thirty Four of the Sorting Hat. Have you? Uh, let's get down to questions what that here. Mouth um, it's been around for what thousands of years. It's probably pretty good. 
It's had experience. Oh, yeah. Except for, unfortunately, it's all with kids, so I don't know if I like the sorting hat anymore. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like, either. Well, like, what if he's, like, with <laughs> Professor Gonagall or whatever? Yeah, Minerva McGonagall. <laughs> yeah, the hot one. Well, she's, like, 90 years old. <laughs> yeah, the hot one. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, yeah, let me just address this from Malcolm X again, because he said it, like, five times. Yeah, George Clooney is the worst Batman. Yeah, I think we, I think we agree. We can all pretty much okay. rest easy on that. There we go. However, <laughs> however, I think Val Kilmer is not bad. I thought not he, bad? No, I didn't think he was bad in Batman oh, yeah. Forever. No, he was, yeah, he was good. I thought he was good. It's just like, his suit didn't need nip-nops. Didn't need those big old nip I mean, I, I thought it needed them more. I need to put armor lock on. <laughs> okay. Um, that was the worst shooting of all time. I feel like I am... I don't know. Like, on a grassy knoll right now. <laughs> nice. How would you be on a grassy knoll? They hit him. No, they didn't. The CIA hit him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what if the CIA was on the grassy knoll? What if the CIA had a grassy knoll, as in they didn't shave down there? The <laughs> okay. Do you think, do you think uh, the JFK, like, assassin was ever like, come on, baby, I want to show you my grassy knoll. <laughs> I think I, think I don't that's know why what... he was also Elvis. <laughs> I, think, I think that's what uh, Jacqueline called her, you know, unshaved thing down there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Come on, John, come see my grassy knoll. I am going to just do those two. All right. Any chats? Uh, let's see, we have some chats. Um, I'm scrolling through some stuff here. Guys, what happened to the good old days? How are there only 60 people watching? 57. What happened to, like, 500 people watching? <laughs> Maybe the real Batman is the friends we made along the way. I think so. Uh, let's see. So it's, someone says the worst debate I've uh, DC Temple says the worst debate I've ever seen is Deathstroke versus Deadpool. Like what? What about the debate is bad? He though? says, "Oh, I hate this debate so much because fans of both these characters are hating on each other." Yeah, you know the weird thing about Deadpool versus Deathstroke. I don't really know a lot about the debate, but a lot of superhero fans, in my opinion, allegedly, are kind of toxic. Mm -hmm. Like, they're obsessed with their favorite superhero. Mm -hmm. And it, it's to the point where they think their favorite superhero is perfect. You know, I know we just talked about Batman and the fans of Batman. Uh -huh. Deadpool's another character where the fans of Deadpool, I feel like, are maybe not as toxic as Batman fans or Spider-Man fans, but they're pretty toxic. Like, it's to the point where it's just, I feel like it's just like, oh, uh -huh, edgy character fun. <laughs> Well, I and feel then like, it gets to the point where it's like, this character's the best. Well, I feel like people who think he's just an edgy character also don't understand him. Right. There's a lot of emotional Deadpool stories there is. in the comics. Like, He's kind of a tragic character sometimes, too. And I think when people just think he's edgy and that's all he is to him, so he's good. Right. I feel like they've only seen like the first Deadpool movie, and then they've based their entire basis for this character off of a misunderstanding even of that movie. Because even those movies aren't just Deadpool edgy. Right. They're still emotional. Like, he's still a character in them, mm -hmm. and he still has, I don't know, feelings and stuff, you know? Yeah, he's not just funny guy funny. Right, yeah. So I, I feel like a lot of people... I, I don't know. I feel like they just don't understand who Deadpool is, even if they are a fan of him. Right. Yeah, you know, and, and I guess I don't know much about that specific... Oh, nice. That specific debate, like Deadpool versus uh, Deathstroke, because to me it's like... Dang it. You know, yeah, Deathstroke's a pretty great assassin, but literally can't Deadpool, like, partially heal? Oh, he can heal more than partially. So, like, it's like, you know, to me that seems like a, I don't know, so pretty clear advantage for Deadpool, I guess is what I'm trying to get at. Right. You know, because, yeah, Deathstroke could be the best assassin ever, but, like, if the other guy's just sitting here healing the whole time... And also, I feel like we're not we're not talking about... Deadpool's, you know, sword fighting abilities. Like, I'd say he's also pretty... Oh my. He's pretty good himself, too. With his sword? With his sword, yeah. Whoa, jeez! Uh... That was so... Like, okay. I still hear gunfire. Jeez. Oh, my thing is... My ear is doing the... Doo -doo 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 thing. Really? Yeah. Well, I, uh... Wow, that was such a huge blast there. It just froze the game.
or it kicked yeah. you out of the match or whatever it did. Did it stop doing that weird noise? Yeah. Jeez. Okay. All right. Well, we're <clears> back <throat> in. Okay, well. Well, what? Maybe we should play like one more. Okay. That was weird, though. That was really yeah, odd. Yeah, that was really messed up. <laughs> okay, um... Well, let's see if I can get one on Halo 2. Okay. Well, let's do a Halo 2 Anniversary, maybe. Yeah, are you wanting to play it? Are you good at Halo 2? I'm pretty decent at Halo 2. Here, why don't you, do you play, want me to play it? I'll do the chat, because I'm actually willing to read it. Oh, gee. So, we want to rejoin the match we left? Or should we just do... If you choose to matchmake, you will not be able to return to the match, which may result in a temporary ban. Uh, no, I don't want to rejoin that. So matchmake? Yeah. Even though we might get a ban? Well, we didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, we did. No, we didn't. The game crashed. No, that's not that's not the game's fault. Um, ben Dover, which is the perfect <laughs> name, asked when we're doing our Arkham Easter Egg video. I don't know. It depends. I'd make Arkham when I want now, like when I feel like it'll be good. Um, the problem is, like, I could just grab you five Easter eggs that are just boring mm -hmm. right now and put it up tomorrow, but a lot of times I kind of take time to, like, find stuff, either when I'm replaying through the game or, like, reading stuff online and things like that, so probably near future, mm -hmm. but I don't know when. I mean, I wanted to do another one for Marvel Spider-Man as well, but I don't know if the interest is really there right now, because, like, it used to be, and then I put up a Marvel Spider-Man video two days ago? And, like, not many people watched it. And, like, YouTube didn't really show it to anybody. So it's kind of annoying. And the same thing was actually happening with Arkham now. Where, like, it seems like YouTube doesn't want to recommend people Arkham content. Which is weird. It's, like, the opposite of what it used to be. Like, I can put it up and I'll get a couple more thousand views than normal because I know you guys like it. But, like, YouTube doesn't want to show it to people. And mm. I've been trying to grow my channel, not just sit where I am. So I kind of try and do a mixture of, like, things that, you know, I know you guys who have been here forever want to see, things that I think new people want to see, things, you know what I mean, things that I want to make. I mean, I want to pretty much make, I don't want any video to be something I don't want to make, but mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Um, so I try and do, like, a mixture, and it's just really bizarre how YouTube has been recently, where, like, I can put up something that's, like, the most interesting thing of all time, and it'll do terrible but then I can go whine about something I, I find just like a minor nuisance and YouTube will be like, hey, everybody, look at this. And it's <laughs> right. like, I don't really <clears throat> get it. I mean, that's not really, really the only reason I make content, obviously. Like, if it was, I never would have left Batman Arkham because that was my biggest viewed thing. And I never would have, like, gone outside of it, you know, to make mm -hmm. more stuff. Um, but, like, I still want to make that stuff. It's just I want to make it when... I feel like it'll be good. Like, I think the next Arkham video is... I wanted to talk about things that are different between Gotham Knights and Arkham. Um, and Jill and I are going to play a couple hours of Gotham Knights, I think, tonight together for our Let's Play. So for, you know, Degenerate Plays, we're going to be doing some more of that. And I wanted to make a video of, like, five things I actually prefer in Gotham Knights um, in terms of style and, like, things like that. Which, if you, wanna, if you want an oh, example geez. of it... Like, something I think is done better. I think customization is done better. Like, I think that in the Arkham series, you put on a skin, and it's an awesome skin, but you really have no no bearing on anything with that skin. Whereas, like, in Gotham Knights, you can, like, customize your emblem and change your cowl and your boots, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there's at least some interactivity. So, like, that's an example, just one, of, like, maybe something I'd prefer in Gotham Knights. So I wanted to make, like, a top five each way of, like, things I think are better or I prefer or whatever. Yeah. I'll probably have to call them better because that's the only way anyone sees the video. And that's the other thing, like, not to whine at you guys, but one of the most annoying things I've been dealing with lately is, like, if I don't name my video some, like, perfect specimen name of, like, search engine optimization, even my subscribers don't see what I uploaded. Well, that's the thing I find weird is, you know, like, if people... Every time I try to attack someone, I get attacked from behind. That's the thing I find kind of weird Yeah, is... by me. <laughs> Is, like, I don't know, are people, like, subscribed? I'm, I'm talking to people just in general here, not anyone specific. Are people just subscribed to just a million different accounts? Because, to me, it's like, if I'm subscribed to someone and I want to watch, like, a, 
I don't know, like, okay, even like a Degenerate J video, I would just type in Degenerate J, look on his account, or your account, I should say, and be like, oh, this is the latest video uploaded today, I'll watch it. You I know, but I... like, for some reason, like, people need recommendations or something. I guess that's like the weirdest thing ever to me, and maybe I'm just kind of talking out loud, is that, you know, it's like, well, the, YouTube hasn't recommended this to people, but it's like, but why does YouTube need to recommend this to people? Like, aren't people wanting to watch content? Are they just like sitting around like, well, I need a recommendation first. You, yeah. know, you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, when it, when it's someone who's subscribed to the account, click on, like, I want to see, you know, I know you upload every day basically right well i don't upload every day well i know you upload well, almost I, every day i would say almost every other day is john general but yeah so it's like you know when not you just kind of suspect like well maybe there's a, a video uploaded today or something i don't so know let's go on the page yeah I, I would, and see what's there i would think so you know but like apparently that's like not a thing like we need like some big email recommendation like what does youtube want me to watch today well, as Eddie pointed out, which, by the way, Eddie, thank you for helping moderate the chat. I appreciate it. A lot of people have gotten lazier, including us. Right. Like, just in general, I think society has become lazy. And I'm sure there's some deep point to be made there, but also... Wait, oh, I thought you were just quitting. No, I was uh, trying to find my loadout. But also, I think that it's just, hey, I'm tired, I had a long day at work, I turn on YouTube, there's 12 things on the page... That one looks interesting. That's your guy. I, I know. I was trying to throw a grenade. Okay, it's left trigger. Yeah. Uh, that thing looks interesting, and then they click that. And I think a lot of times people forget. And I I don't know, you know? Like, I I guess I'm not subscribed to anybody I don't want to watch. Right. I'm sure there's videos I skip. Oh, uh, yeah. More sure. like don't get to, because, like, I'm not, you know, God here with all the time in the world. But um, Well, yeah, and I guess it's like... I'm not expecting everyone to watch every single possible thing. But oh it's boy, just... if they did, I'd be rich. Well, yeah. But <laughs> Can it's... you imagine 100,000 views on every single video I put up? I know, that'd be awesome. That would be awesome. That's, but... That was supposed to be the point of subscribers, is they're people who want to yeah. watch your videos, but now they don't show anyone, so no. And that's and that's just the weirdest thing ever to me, because like, I never... When I go on YouTube to watch a video, I never like go be like, I want to know what's recommended to me first. Okay, jeez. Well, that's I'm doing really bad, but I also feel like this other team is really good, Randy. Well, that's the thing is, I, I agree with Darth Revan here, which also has the blessed number of, uh, oh, I thought it said 69. It says 9689, but there's oh, a 69 okay. in there. That basically, like, a lot of people don't think you have uploaded if they won't give any notification at all. You and that I mean? and that makes sense, yes. Because, like, people, that's supposed to be the point of the notification system, and I don't think everyone understands the notification system doesn't work. That's a failure of YouTube. You know, like, imagine if, imagine if you went on Netflix and you're, like, watching Stranger Things and it doesn't say there's any new episodes or whatever. It just says, oh, one season. But then you have to click on it and then it says, hey, by the way, here's the second season. Like, if you just start scrolling over it, you're going to think, oh, there's no second season, just the first season. But, I mean, yes, I understand your point, but also, like, I just know there's a second season. Right, because you're probably informed on it. I'm not, you know, like, But a lot of people aren't. yeah. Like, if you're, like, imagine you're waiting for the second season to come out. Well, and you're not you just, actively looking up a bunch of news on it. You're just like, oh, it'll come out sometime, I hope. Wouldn't you just look online, though, and be like, is there a second season? I, I get your point. I'm not trying I to play suppose, devil's advocate. I suppose, but I think a lot of people have a lot more important things going on than, like, hey, did YouTuber X upload today? That makes sense. I think a lot of people have, like, I'm unhappy with my life. My wife just <laughs> oh, left geez. me. My kids are, like, my kids hate me. Oh, I'm at a dead-end job. I don't think they're like, hey, what about Slick Moth? What's he up to? <laughs> right. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I think that when you don't show anyone that, like, you make no attempt to actually say, hey, look, these people you follow on this website that you clearly followed for a reason are doing something that they're just not going to notice because yeah. they have a lot of stuff going on in life. Kind of like how you said, like, with Tears of the Kingdom, like, I could just come back and say, like, if you really cared about Tears of the Kingdom, wouldn't you go play it right away? Right. Also, I think I'm the only person on my team. Really? Yeah. It's like, maybe, or maybe you still care about Tears of the Kingdom, but, like, you're so busy that you don't have time right now. And then I think that, you know, that compounds with the issue of YouTube just doesn't want people to succeed. They What they want is big brands to succeed because people like Jimmy Kimmel 
are safe, you know? It's like, you know, oh, well, they've skirted the rules on TV for 20 years. Like, clearly they're going to be fine here. Advertisers love this person. Right. But it's like tomorrow, um, I don't know. I've, you know, I've made a video with him before. Like, I'm just going to Jimmy him. Kimmel? No, no, no. Like, <laughs> so Evan, like Evan Falarka, who does a lot of stuff with, with Spider-Man. Like, YouTube isn't sitting around like, well, I want Evan to be successful because they're like, well, what if Evan does something that makes us look bad? Right. So they're always hedging their bets. And they're, like, really... It's four-on-one here for everyone in the comments. I'm bad because it's four-on-one. Oh, nobody said that. So, like, I think that it's it's just frustrating because if you don't, if you don't take the time to actually help people, you know, to, to actually make the system work the way it should... Then what happens is you don't. Th those people just don't succeed. Yeah, that's just how it is. That makes sense. Um, and unfortunately, the only way to break through that is through sheer numbers. I mean, go look at someone like Charlie, like Moist Critical Penguins channel. Um, he doesn't get views off of every subscriber. It's just he has so many subscribers that he gets a ton of views. Right. Markiplier. That dude should be getting, like, 5 million views a, a video. Mm -hmm. Clearly everybody sub because they want to watch Markiplier, but he doesn't get that because, well, they won't show everybody. Right. So that's just kind of how it works. I don't know. Um, this is bullcrap. Wizard of Lonely said, did you guys get past that mission you were stuck on in AC Brotherhood? Yes. Yeah, even though somebody doesn't know how to climb, we did. We did get past it. Okay. Okay, this is bullcrap. And I'm not quitting, because I know... I know he was... <laughs> You're banned! Uh, well... I, 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 it's four on one. No, I can't no, do I anything. Know, I, know. It's just, I cannot do anything. Every joke I went to immediately was like, that's bad, don't say that, that's bad. Not because they're mean to you, but because they're morbidly offensive. Oh, okay. statements. <laughs> you mean like in the chat? Well, I was going to say something like, I feel like I'm watching Michael J. Fox tech demo this game okay. or something. <laughs> Like, that's just, a, that's just an example of the kind of joke I was going to make. Oh, okay. got it. So, like, all right. OG Edit said, hey, guys, hope you are both doing well. Do you guys have a favorite Halo mission? Um, mine is definitely 343 Guilty Spark. I'm so bad at remembering the, the names for the missions. First off, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I love the mission Pillar of Autumn at the end of, of Halo 1, where you go back to the Pillar of Autumn and it's overrun by the Flood. Yeah. That, that mission was, was insane. That was and how mission. you can go onto the bridge and the bridge is just annihilated. Yeah. Um, I think it's called Pillar of Autumn. Unless that's the name of the first one. Like the very first mission on the Pillar of Autumn. I don't remember actually. But yeah, no. Also, I, can this be done? At least like, they're not being poor sports minutes. about it. They're just running the match out. They're being poor sports about it. They could just let me live. <sighs> that's true, they could throw the game. Can we, like, I just can't believe that there's no mercy rule where it just says, hey, the match is done, clearly everyone quit. Well, yeah, and it's like... I also feel like if you know every spawn by heart like these people do, you might want to play a different game. Like, I'm not trying to say you play too many games, but I think you might play this game too much. Right. You know? Well, yeah, and, like, I spawn in and immediately start dying. But OG Edits, thank you very, very much for the uh, super chat. We really do appreciate that. <sighs> Um, Kevick asked if we're ever going to play through Arkham Like, what Knight. is this? Yes. Okay, yes, we are going to play through Arkham Knight, but right now I'm playing through Gotham Knights, the clearly superior game. Oh, sorry, I'm choking on bullshit. <laughs> um, yeah, we will. I mean, Jill wants, to, Jill wants to play through them with me, so here's the problem, is, like, I'd rather just kind of play them again over time. Like, the old Let's Plays of Asylum and City are bad. I know you guys like T. I like T. He's one of my best friends. The video quality on those is bad. Okay, and I don't have time with him to re-record every single Let's Play we do because those are from years ago. I thought you only did Origins. Uh, we did Origins recently, but uh, T and I in the past before we put you should just back out because we'll kind of finish up the, the five and thirty two. I went positive. It's positive. Um, you know my thing with um, that is like Jill wants to play them, so I'm like, well then why don't we just kind of go in order? Like why don't we play Blackgate? Why don't we play Asylum, you know, at some point again, like the PC version that actually looks good? Why don't we play City again and then get to Night, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so, like, to me, Night is not a rush, because Night is not my favorite out of those games. And I was pushed into playing those games so much, you know, back when I did 
that content primarily that like they're still very fun for me but like if i'm just gonna ramrod through the games i guess i feel like one i won't notice as much stuff Mm -hmm. like if i don't replay some of the other ones first and i won't enjoy it as much and then that comes off in the let's play because like i'm sure you guys have seen let's play parts where nate and i are not enjoying the game like yeah, the, just watch Metroid. Probably the last five parts of Metroid... Um, Zero Mission. Zero Mission. Good game, but we were having a horrible time. Cause yeah. I, I, by the way, I could not get the Wii U controller to do that stupid jump. Right. I don't know why, I just couldn't. Uh, so, like, we were having a bad time with it. And it's like, well, do you want to watch Let's Plays where we play through the game you want? But, it's, no but it's not entertaining? Because I just don't want to do that, is all. Yeah. But we have to wrap up here. Nate has to leave. I didn't know that was the time. <clears throat> um, any last minute things uh, oh yeah so Celeste says if you play City again I expect to see the return of the Muffin Man I'm going to have to go back uh, Kevick says that's a good idea to be honest you should go back and redo those old games in better quality yeah that's my plan play through um, uh, probably Blackgate with Jill because Jill's our side scroller person <laughs> Ooh, side scroller. Yeah. she actually likes those a lot more than Nate does so Nate's not playing that with me and T never liked that game. So I think Jill will actually have fun with that. So I'll play that with her. Then we'll kind of see where we are after that. But, um, you know, it's like I don't want to be ungrateful at all. I really appreciate all of you, and I appreciate the stuff that got me where I am. I just really want to balance doing, like, the the Arkham stuff, you know? And, yeah. Like, the Batman stuff. Because I think for a while I was very bitter about it. Like, how dare people ask me to do more of this? Fuck off. Like, I'm so <laughs> sick of it. Like, all you guys care about is Arkham. Like, I feel like for a while I was, like, really angry and a douchebag about it. Yeah, I don't think I really voiced it completely, but, like, you could tell I was annoyed. Uh, Because, like, I tried so hard to do content on all kinds of stuff I was passionate about, and YouTube kept being like, hey, but here's the finger, how about you just go back to Arkham? Right. So then when people would say they'd want Arkham, I would kind of conflate that with, like, well, I'm mad at YouTube, so therefore, like, I need to be mad about this. It's like, I'm not mad about it, I just want, I want to vary the content, Mm -hmm. you know? And, and be sure that I'm, like, passionate about what I'm covering. Because, like, I'm sure I could go back in on Arkham and be back at the top of the game in six months and be making way more money. But we will hit a bottom of the barrel point of, like, scraping it where it's like, oh, these are bad videos. Degenerate J sold out. Yeah. And even if you don't think that, I will think that. Because it'll be like, hey, these other 500 things I wanted to make a video on, oh, I passed on those for money. I don't know. Like, if I'm going to do that, I could just go back to business. Mm-hmm. You know, so I just want to be careful about that. That's all. I want to make that content good. So that's why I'm I am slow, which I am sorry because I know some of you guys really want to see night, um, and I don't try and drag my feet on it. It's just I want the stuff to be good. That uh, makes Nate, sense. Nate has to leave. He's like, like I do have to leave. Literally kicking his legs here. So I'm like ready to beat you up. Thank you guys for joining the uh, the live stream. We appreciate it very much. While Nate grabs his stuff, if. Uh, I want to say goodbye to a, suit, a couple of people. Goodbye, Ben Dover. Thank you very much for joining. And thanks for having the best name ever. Michael, uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake. Jill wants to play Resident Evil 2 Remake and 3 Remake with me before 4. I want to play through a lot of the RE games on the Let's Play channel. It's just uh, very, very slow. Re-upload all old Arkham videos. Easy profit. Yeah, I might as well. Um, <laughs> I need to apologize for disliking the condu- uh, the... Concussion Detonator says MMJP, <laughs> which, by the way, goodbye, MMJP. Goodbye, Kevick. I appreciate you very much. Daryl, nice to see you. Celeste. Philip, Dr. Shane, Revan was here as well. Eddie, thank you for helping. Uh, Mod, same to Jill. And I want to say thank you to Hargens, who also is one of our Super Chat, or our, our members. Super Chad. For H4R Guns, I never know, but I do my best. Scotty, goodbye, and also we love God of War. And goodbye, Dark Nightmare. We appreciate you very much. Thank you for the super chat, and I hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you later before Nate gets, like, angry at me here. (laughs)